Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. You have arrived at Dolly World. And we're going to do some dilly-dallying in Dolly World today, which is Saturday, December 19, 2015. We're going to do some dilly-dallying with Michelle Caruso. She is here to share with us her trip to Cleopatra's Point Needle in uh, New York City in their woods. What do you call that place? Well, she'll tell Central us. Park? Central Park. Thank you, thank you, yes. Did you see the woods? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I didn't know what else to call it. <laughs> um, okay, so... Oh, I gotta do the advertisement. See, I'm trying to remember everything before we get into it, Michelle. Um, this is a listener supported station. So y'all, if you have some money you can put toward the machinery that is used, like the computers and in and the boom things and the mixer things and God knows what else they use. Um, headsets and, and all that stuff, which Colleen's holding all hers together with rubber bands and band-aids. Um, it would be wonderful if you would go and hit the donate button. Also, you could subscribe for five dollars a month and you have to renew that every month per Dave. He didn't want anyone to feel they're forced into something. And when you do that, you you have access to all the archives. And when I say all, I mean years worth of archives. I don't know if anyone could could ever be able to hear all the archives if you set out to do it. So you got a humongous variety of those. And okay, I think I did our advertisements. Um, so I want to introduce to you Colleen first. She's the producer. Hi, everybody. She, my buddy. And now to the star of the show, Michelle Caruso. <laughs> You're so silly. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful introduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just take it away, girl, and share with us how you want to share it. I might ask you some questions, but. That's yeah, it's helpful if you ask questions because, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it'll be helpful if you can kind of make it as a conversation. Yeah. So, um, where do I start? Well, start at the beginning. What made you decide you wanted to do your mission? Well, I didn't decide. It was decided for me. There you <laughs> go. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was, well, the mission first was to um, to go to the obelisk, uh, which is called Cleopatra's Needle in Central Park, um, and to do a clearing of the needle and um, subsequently clear the ley lines. The, the needle sits right on the ley lines. So um, that was like the smallest part of the whole story, actually. It was kind of funny because it started um, – it started months, months ago, um, kind of like the little pieces of the puzzle coming through. And, um, so I think one of the original, um, the original pieces of the puzzle was, um, get, getting a hold of a, um, of a round table audio from a, some of the, I don't know, there's about a dozen or so of the, um, you know, most wealthiest CEOs in the world. Um, I think they were actually all American. Um, that was held at the New York Stock Exchange. So that was interesting. Um, and there was just a, a feeling of, you know, why am I getting this information? There's a reason I'm getting this information, you know, and what's it for? So it didn't come right away. And, um, and then the next piece was, um, what was the next piece? The next piece was I was went to New York City because I, I don't live far from New York City, and um, I went into New York. I haven't been into New York um, for a long time, and over the last probably ten years or so, when I do go into New York, it's like, you know, I'm going for like a specific event, so I'm not really hanging out in the city um, like you know I used to do in the old days. We used to just 
you know, cruise into the city and just stay there pretty much till the sun came up, you know. Um, but now it's more been, you know, it's a birthday party or a dinner event or, you know, um, a concert or something like that, some kind of in and out. And um, so <laughs> there was... <laughs> I'm not it. going there. Know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> made me laugh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think it was all that talk of a sexy man slumber party. Yeah, I think so. Secretly really want these sexy men to come. At least Sam Elliott, right? Yes. <laughs> so um, when I was in the city, um, we, we went, I actually went twice in like two weeks. And... Um, we were just kind of walking around, going to different places, hanging out. And I really noticed, um, I, I noticed there was, um, what I described as like two separate distinct energy flows through New York city. Um, and I could, you know, sense the old energy of New York and there was this new energy and I really didn't have any kind of feeling on it, whether it was good or it was bad. Uh, but it was one of those things I could not get it out of my mind. Um, I was curious about it and, you know, you know, intuitively there's certain things that stick with you and you know, there's a reason and, you know, when the powers that be decide to give you the reason, you figure it out. So, um, I just kind of let it simmer there in my brain and, you know, knew at some point everything would kind of come together and make sense. And it was cool that night too because, um, you know, I talked to so many different people that night and pretty much everybody that I talked to was kind of like long, you know, long time New Yorkers and in conversation with them, even though they wouldn't describe it the way I experience it, you know, being energy sensitive as two separate energies, but in talking to them, I could get that sense that they were feeling the same thing. When you say that, Bunny, do you mean, um, Nancy's always talking about the different, um, the, the different energies, but she, the different, not realms, dimensions, that we've gone into another dimension. Is that what you're talking about? Or is it strictly energy? No, it's strictly energy. Okay, thanks. You know, so just like there's a difference in energy, in the energy of love versus hate, right? There's, if, if you're in the presence, I think everybody can relate to this. If you're in the presence of somebody who's happy and versus somebody who's miserable, right? They have a different energy. Uh huh. Right? So it's kind of like, that's really what I'm kind of saying. It's like a, it's more of a presence okay. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but it didn't have any kind of, there wasn't no, there wasn't any inkling to me of, you know, of the nature of the second one. Uh-huh. It was just kind of like, it was just, it was just a different feel. You know, there was just a contrast. So, um, the next, the next step with it was, um, the, guess really was that whole and this is when things started getting really everything started to come come together um so this was about two months ago was when i had um met um connected with somebody that um i hadn't seen in a while and um that was in tower two of the world trade center um And there was a knowing that there was, um, that person's energy needed some kind of clearing, um, for the, um, that was related to the trauma that he experienced in 9-11. And, um, I just want to be careful with that. If that's a big part of it all, I just want to be careful for that person's, um, privacy, but, um, when I did that clearing for that person, um, that's when everything opened up and it was the, um, all of the information started to come through and then there was also clarity on that person's 
connection. Um, that person needed to be involved in, um, in the, the, the work that I did for the obelisk. And that was when I got the details around the obelisk also. So, um, everything kind of came through. And at that point, I mean, at remembering now, I don't remember the exact order of everything, but it, it was all coming through as in, um, there, um, there, there was a nuclear explosion at the towers and the nuclear created this sort of, um, artificial energy, um, or synthetic energy as my guides describe it. And that's when I got the clarity of what that second energy was. And, um, that energy had hit the obelisk and had gone into the ley lines. And so that, that was when I realized exactly what they wanted done, um, with the work. Um, um, I don't want to get you, um, out of order or anything, but Vanessa was asking if you could explain further what is Cleopatra's needle. I don't know if this is the right time to get into that or later. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we can do, I'm going to be all over the place anyway. So, oh, okay. cause like I said, I don't really remember the, um, it's, uh, how it all came in. You know. Yeah, like the exact, you know, some, I, I mean, I know like the things before I got the information, I know those in the order, but mm-hmm. like from that point, once I did that clearing for that individual, mm-hmm. everything just, it was like all the information, um, I was being downloaded with all the information, all the detail, like, you know, very extreme details, um, to like constantly. So it, it just gets hard to kind of put it all into order there. Uh-huh. So um the Cleopatra's needle is um it's an obelisk in Central Park and there's four Cleopatra's needle. And when I did the research on what the needle is, you know, that's when it got like kind of even a little bit more interesting to me. Uh-huh. So um the originally uh, it was built in 14 something BC. Uh, I think it was 1450 BC. Um, there was the original twin obelisks were placed in one of the, um, were built in one of the entrances for one of the temples in Egypt. And, um, in, I think it was the 1800s, and I'm bad, so bad with history, but those part, those details aren't really so important anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, there, Egypt gifted one of the original needles. Now, originally they had nothing to do with Cleopatra. They just got Cleopatra's name because at some point, um, when Cleopatra was in reign, she had those two obelisks, the two original transported to one of her temples. Uh, but originally they had nothing to do with her, and I think they just called them Cleopatra's needles because, you know, it just probably sounds interesting. Um, so they, Egypt, at one point France and England um, was allies with Egypt in one of the, you know, one of the battles, things going on. So as a um, thank you, um, they gifted one of the original obelisk to Paris, to France, and, and it's in Paris. And then they recreated another set. So they made two more, and this was in the 1800s. Um, they made two more. They gifted one to England, and that's in London. And the fourth one they gifted to the United States. Now, the United States did not want to pay to transport it. So Vanderbilt, which... They're so her, cheap. Go ahead. <laughs> You're familiar with the Vanderbilts? Yes, yes. Right. So um, the Vanderbilt at that time, um, he paid for the obelisk to get transported. In doing so, he decided that he would take it upon himself to decide where it got placed. And where he placed it, which is behind the muse- the Metropolitan Museum of Art, um, there was a lot of controversy about that uh, because 
it was just a very obscure place at that time. They've built around it now so that it's easy, accept, easily accessible, but at that time it wasn't. And, but he specifically wanted it there and he just made up, I don't know, kind of some ridiculous reasons and, um, got his way and put it there. Um, so, you know, in reading this to me, like, of course, there's no mystery as to why it had to be there because he wanted it on the ley lines. So, um, that was another interesting, um, piece of it all I found. Yeah, well, I had heard he put it there on purpose because of the, the ley lines and how it lines up. Yeah, the ley lines, um, the ley lines run, so on the one side of Central Park that the obelisk is on, it runs, um, parallel to Fifth Avenue. And so the ley lines run parallel to Fifth Avenue through the park. So, um, yeah, that was, it, it, to me, there's no doubt, like that's, you know, that's why, um, because anybody working with energy would know that that would, um, you know, create an easier way to flow energy. So being right on the ley lines. And then um, those ley lines all connect. So all the needles connect at some point through the ley lines. All four of the needles are on ley lines. Yeah. So I, um, well, Nancy posted a picture in there. I didn't see it until after I posted, um, a site they can go to to, to, uh, see the picture of it and, and go and learn more about it. Yeah, it's interesting what they did because, um, the obelisk got obviously a square, as a square base, and, um, they, uh, the, the area around it, you know, that's all paved, um, and it's like closed in, but there's like a, a small opening to walk through and it's, it's a circle around, you know, which, um, was all pretty interesting to me. But, um, and it, I was even, um, th- there's been a lot of stuff that's been done there. Um, uh, my, um, spiritual teacher that I work with, um, she travels all over the world. So it's, I don't talk to her that often, but, um, we connected last week. And she's told me, you know, she's done quite a few classes there. And, um, you know, so it's been a very active place for, um, you know, magical happenings. So it's, um, oh, it was I would pretty think cool. So, yeah. yeah. With all the energies that are there. Yeah. Yeah. It was really neat because when I came around the, um, when I came around the, cause it's behind the, the museum. So when I came around the museum and then, you know, I, I saw her, it was just this, I saw the obelisk, it was like this overwhelming feminine energy, which really, I'll, I'll never forget that, I was really shocked, and it was just so cool, I was like, oh, she's a she, <laughs> you know, because you always think of those things as very masculine, you know, and <laughs> she's a girl, <laughs> and I give her like a big hug, like, oh, you beautiful thing, you know, you know, like, it was just gor- it's just gorgeous, you know, really beautiful. Uh-huh. So, um, yeah, so I thought that was really, that was really cool to me that to discover that I don't know if all four of them are, um, that I don't know. I would imagine that it's two females and two males. Um, cause this work was really all about, um, it was all about unity and, um, unity into oneness. And that's what was really interesting to me because this has been a very intense year for me in my own work. And my own spiritual work and, um, the theme really has been in, in that aspect of it for myself has been about that unity, um, and the unity into oneness and diversity and, um, bringing that all into oneness while maintaining the duality and, but, you know, holding the duality and the diversity. And, um, so when I started getting the information about what this was all about, um, I saw how it all totally, you know, was in alignment with that, which was so cool. Um, and it really showed me why, um, you know, they had me doing the personal work, um, the nature of the personal work that I was doing this year prior, you know, how it was all in preparation for myself 
to be able to flow. Um, um, the energy without understanding. So um, it was really cool. And, and you know, the other thing that comes came up to you was um, was about the Twin Towers um, and how, you know, the, the Twin Towers actually um, were, were, were created um, through um, very positive, um, very authentic energies with the intention, of, with the intention of duality and the understanding of um, the male and the feminine energies and how they, um, you know, they work together and in the, the, um, the purity of them. And that was really cool to me too, because I was always very fond of the, the twin towers and I'm not like that really with structures at all. Yeah. And, um, especially a building, you know, maybe a monument could be cool, but, um, the obelisk was definitely, you know, cool. I'm sure like I would be moved by like a pyramid or something, but like a building built in our, you know, in, in our lifetimes, to me, it is not very interesting to me. <laughs> so I was always really drawn to those towers. And when they, um, when they built the Freedom Tower, I was really upset. Like it really bugged me that they, they didn't, they didn't, um, build two towers. And I know there was a lot of controversy about that. People had mixed feelings and stuff, but it always bugged me that, you know, they were, they went with the single tower. Um, the single building, like it just didn't seem right. And so when I got all this information, it was like all these like one aha moment after another, you know, and um, the understanding. I think think you should share with the people, not all of them know you like I do, and I didn't think of this to start with. Just tell them what you do for a living, like when you work with people. Oh, okay. Just briefly explain that, and that will help them to, to tie in how you get these energy connections. Okay. okay. Well, I'm a, I'm a transformational life coach and um, I'm energy healer, I'm a Reiki master. Um, I study Kabbalah, um, I, and I um, I'm a shaman. I'm um, a ritual master, high priestess. I've been um, formally working in, as far as being trained in energy work and shamanism for about 10 years. And um, I've always, you know, my, I got, draw, I was drawn to that because I was always, um, you know, I see energy, I experience energy. It, it, to me, energy is just, I understand everything in the, in terms of energy. Um, I've always been that way. Um, so, um yeah, alchemy and ritual, ritual work is just very, um, it's just all very natural for me. But I do have a lot of, um, pretty extensive training with the, um, in the ancient teachings through the, um, through the mystery school, um, and currently and prior to that was, um, um, kind of a combination of things. So you're very in tune with energies of all different kinds. And of course you would pick up on the, on the buildings, the twin towers and, and the obelisk and, and the angels. The angels. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, it's uh, like for me, it's just when I, um, because I experience energy so I'm so sensitive to it. It's not abnormal for me to just feel a, like a draw to something and not really know why, not have a clarity um, to it. Um, so it's when I um, when one when it happens and it sticks with me, you know, it stays on my mind. I know, you know, like at this point, I know because there's work for me to do there. There's, you know learning and work you know they they go hand in hand so um yeah so it's always cool when you get these um uh when you got the when i get the the reasons for why i get called to something you know it's funny like i have tons of of um pictures um my a friend of mine that i used to hang out with years ago um obviously years ago had one of those little cessna planes 
So he used to take me flying all the time. And I always made him take me down the Hudson so I could, and I always, every time I went, I had to take a picture of the Twin Towers. I had like all these pictures of the Twin Towers from the Cessna. It was just over the years. So it's funny to see like, you know, that that draw was always there and to have that understanding of it now Uh as to why, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, but they, um, they had their way with that. <laughs> and. <laughs> well, I mentioned the angels to, to draw you into, the um, your, your two angels, yeah. Right. So, um, <clears throat> the angel that I, I work mostly with is, um, Archangel Raphael. Um, and this goes back, um, you know, hundreds of thousands. I mean, it, this goes back, you know, a long, 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 long time. <laughs> and um, so he, he is the one that I, I, it's the easiest for me to connect to. Um, and so I've always felt his presence and have had his presence um, with me when I do healing work. Um, what was cool, what started happening this year was I actually started being able to have direct communication with him. And that was a first, so where I can have open conversations. Now I understand why. Um, you know, at the time I just thought I, it was just solely because the level of progression that I had gotten with my work. But, I mean, of course that's part of it, but um, I couldn't have done this without his presence. And um, Archangel uh, Mikael uh, was also there for the, the day of the healing. So... Um, Do you want me to just get right into that? Well, yeah, you can do that, or you can you can start from your home and when you got on the train with them, and so start uh, where you think is the starting point where you want to start today. Okay, because you're so, on JP show, so go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start so, where you want to. So, um, yeah. So it was Thursday, last Thursday, the the tenth. And, um, I got up, I had like a lot of, with all of this, this going on and, and the shifts in order for this to make this happen. And, um, for me within myself, it's just been like, uh, this emotional roller coaster. And, um, so there's been a lot of like, uh, stressful moments, um, in most days at some points for like the last few weeks. And Thursday was like, I woke up and I just felt like so clear and just so great. And it was the like best I had felt in weeks. And um, after I did the clearing on that individual, um, they really dropped the whole subject of the obelisk and that whole trip. And it, I was kind of like, okay, you know, we went from talking about it every day. And then now all of a sudden my guides are like, it's like not even on the radar and that was a little confusing, but I just, you know, left the trust to them. Um, so, and I had in my mind, you know, when they tell me, like, okay, you, you know, now it's time to go. I figured, like, you know, I would be able to have this, you know, you picture in your mind, you have things planned out. Like, it was going to be a specific day, and I was thinking what was the best day of the week. And, um, you know, I had this whole plan, and I'll do a little bit of, you know, hanging out in the city while I'm there. <laughs> No, 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 no. That's not how it happened at all. So <laughs> Thursday, I wake up and like I'm feeling like really clear, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna. Um, I didn't have any clients that day. I had all kind of like busy work to do, and I'm like, I'm gonna give myself the morning off, and I'll I'll get back to work stuff, and I'm just gonna enjoy feeling good. So it was about eleven o'clock. I hadn't showered yet, nothing, and um, I said, let me, let me get my rituals done and my meditations. So I meditate every day. And, um, so I, I, you know, get into my, my ritual and it's like immediately they're like, oh, you have to go today. And I was like, today, <laughs> like, <laughs> don't I have like some kind of like window of like a couple days? Like, <laughs> okay. no, 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 it had to be today. And I was like, oh goodness, you know, because I haven't showered and, you know, uh-huh. so I'm like, okay. You know, I, I, there was just no discussing it, right? Right. So, um, I 
you know, you get into the shower and I'm getting that I need to, the, the person that I did that clearing with, um, that I mentioned earlier, um, that they wanted me to just contact that person and let them know. And I had mentioned this to that person and had asked, and I had asked a few people, right? You, JP, had asked a few of these to, um, to just, I would let you guys know when I'm there. And if you guys can just like kind of say, say a prayer and just hold love in your hearts. So, um, they told me like the, it, it just had to be him, which there's a whole backstory of like that I knew and I understood why. So, um, I contacted him, he agreed and, um, he was no problem. And from that, like from that moment, from 11 o'clock till, um, I was returning home at 6 30, um, on the bus, I was in full, contact with them, um, with Mikhail and Raphael the entire day. And that was really, um, that was just really, I still don't really have the words for that because like I said, like I communicate with Raphael very clearly on a regular basis. That's not new to me, but I don't walk around, (laughs) you know, having these conversations with them in my head and, you know, it's while I'm doing energy work, you know, that that mm-hmm. communication is there to be out in the world and hopping on buses and subways and have that connection. It, it's more than, it's more than the knowing that their presence is there. Mm-hmm. It's really like they're there. You just don't physically see them. And it was really powerful for me. And, um, it was a very high energy place to stay in. And, um, because what was interesting with them was, and with the whole thing, and this was all the work, you know, and I, when it, I, I didn't really think too much about it in the moment, you know, in the moment it was all kind of like after I got home and I just kind of sat around and like kind of absorbed, like what the heck just happened today? Um, you know, thinking about it after, all the work leading up was there was such a focus from, you know, um, from my, you know, crew up there that I work with um, over these months of it was just this really um, getting myself into a purified state and just really um, just a, a really purifying myself you know I've done a lot of clearing work over the years and you know and I, I was pretty clear to begin with and I knew that but um, you know, we always have residual stuff, and we're always taking on stuff, especially being an empath. So um, th- there was just a lot of um, a lot of pressure, and it, there was always a sense of urgency, you know, t- for me to get this stuff clear and to straighten out, you know, some of the um, um, you know not so beneficial, you know, emotional and, and mental patterns that I have. And, um, so I, you know, I've been doing this work for years and years. I've never felt even remotely pressured by my, you know, my higher self or my guides or the divinity that I work with to get something done, you know, Mm -hmm. and that was very clear this year. It was all like, there was a lot of pressure, like there was an urgency and, um, that I was very aware of. And on Thursday, I really came to understand it because, it was interesting because any time that I had, I came out of my higher mind, um, they they sniffed out right in the bud because it was not, I could not spend any, they did not want me spending any time out of my higher mind. I had to be in the purest state of mind. So it really was, a, it really brought my attention to a lot of things that I don't, wouldn't necessarily think as, being a lower mind thinking to me, it's just normal. Like, um, you know, there's, I would think in my head, oh gosh, look at the time and look at where I have to be. And cause I just really wanted to be out of Central Park by, by dark, right? Cause Central mm-hmm. Park's not the great, I don't mind walking around the city by myself and dark after, after dark. Um, but I did not want to be in Central Park after dark. Like, no right. way. That's right. not safe. And so to me, to have that thought, we wouldn't think, I mean, I wouldn't think of that as being, you know, 
is a real problem, right? It's like, uh-huh. to me, that's normal. You're going to think that. But it was not allowed. So there was a lot of little things like that. That You had you know, two archangels with you. They weren't thinking danger for you. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. But it's 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 still, you know, that's a lot of trust. And um, I have to, you know, the, the, with angels or not, I can't be in the book. It was not going to happen. That I was going to be in right. The book. I understand. You know? But it's, I guess the point I'm just trying to make is, like, that's what was just all day. You know, like, any time I had that kind of thought like that, you know, kind of like that, oh, shit. You know, just like a Uh little moment of worry, which seemed so innocent and so harmless. It was not acceptable. And, um, And it was nice because they, it was very easy to release having their energy so close to me right um so the entire bus ride so i get on the bus and um the bus is like 10 minutes late and i get on the bus and it's standing room only you know and um the entire way to the city and like the whole day, they're talking to me, you know, mm-hmm. and that's where I got a lot of a lot of the information about that. This was not just about, you know, the events at 9-11. They gave me a lot of um, filled in a lot of the blanks for me about my own lineage and my own ties to um, um, to ancient Egypt and um, understanding of the energies and you know, how the energies have gotten contaminated and how they did from very early on and how this part of this work was also about um, a restoration of that. And so that was really, that was really powerful um, aspect of it too. You know, and when I got done with the healing, you know, there was definitely this sense of, you know, like kind of giving back to my people kind of thing, <laughs> you know, um, it was really quite, um, yeah, it was pretty cool that way too. So then we, um, this was, I thought this was funny. We're, this is, they were actually telling me about the, about the Egyptian stuff at that time. And all of a sudden it was like, everything was coming in too fast. Yeah. And I was like, you know, you guys got to slow down. Like, you know, here it's been like three hours. I've been in communication with them. And then all of a sudden, like, I, I can't keep up. And um, and then I kind of lost it, like, for a moment. And then I just kept getting breathed center and just getting the guidance to, like, recenter myself. I had a, and I did. And, and then what what it was was we had gone under the Lincoln Tunnel. So my receptors <laughs> work differently underground than they do above ground. Uh-huh. Which I had no idea because I've never been in that situation before. Right. So it was really cool. It was a cool um, learning, and it served me well since you know I was about to spend many hours underground in the subway. <laughs> so <laughs> I was nice and prepared by the time I got to the subways of you know how to keep the um, being able to kind of shift my own frequency um, in and out, you know, when I needed to, depending on where I was. Uh huh. Do you have any questions on anything I said, or you want me to just keep babbling on? Yeah, just just keep taking us through the events. So, like, did the angels do anything funny on the bus, or did they did they kind of take you by the hand to get you to the subway and and get you through that trip? And you know, most of the time I was pretty much in a place where I was just so present and in the moment, there really wasn't a lot of thinking going on. You wow. know, there, there, you know, I was just in such a high, um, energy place, uh-huh. um, that th- there wasn't really thought processes. And, um, there was, uh, what was, you know, I had $20 cash. Well, I had $21 cash on me. And so I didn't feel like stopping because I just wanted to go. Like, I don't feel like stopping at the ATM. 
Um, I was going to bring my credit card just in case. Um, so I don't like going to the city with $21 in cash. So, and the bus, the round trip for the bus was $9. So, and I knew I had to take, well, when I did my itinerary, um, when I checked the itinerary, I thought I put in Cleopatra's Needle, but uh-huh. I just put in Central Park. So it took me to um, the other side of the park. So when I looked at the itinerary, it basically said, you know, take the bus, take one subway, and you're 0.22 miles from your destination. And I was like, oh, how cool is that? So, um, well, when, and then when I was getting ready to leave, um, it was really nice out. It was in the 70s, right, um, that, that, that day. So I was like, um, figuring out what I'm going to wear because if I'm, I, I don't want to get cold, right? Right. I, don't, I had this thing about cold and they kept telling me to like not worry about getting cold, you know, and I was like, I kept worrying about getting cold. So <laughs> I had Here this you are with two archangels and, and you're going to do your own damn thing. Yeah. And you know what? It's funny <laughs> because they, I do believe they have somewhat of a sense of humor because so, yeah. they could have really put their foot down with this, but they didn't. Because there were things they put their foot down with, right? Uh-huh. But, um, so I think there was just a little lesson. Cause I do have a tendency to buck the guidance. That's one and of my things that, that I'm working yeah. through. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. one of my things that I'm working through. <laughs> so I think that they, you know, this was something that wasn't going to have, you know, detrimental outcome. Right. Um, so they let me learn my lesson here. Because <laughs> I was asking them, well, what do I bring? And I was like, do I bring, you know, what do I need to bring any tools? Do I need to bring any stones? Do I, salt. Salt was all I needed to bring. So I'm like, okay, I know what. I need to bring salt, no problem. Mm-hmm. So I had this gray sweatshirt on. And I knew I needed my black wool coat also. And I just all of a sudden got in my head that this, the black fleece sweater with the hood looked so much better underneath. The whole coat and the gray sweatshirt. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh huh. <laughs> and so I switched, and they told me I was going to be too hot. Uh huh. And I was like, "No, it'll be fine because it just looks nicer." <laughs> <laughs> so that was that, and oh my god, like that was like all day, all day. It was yeah, doing one of those. So I let you know. Oh, brother, here she goes again. <laughs> I had the, you know, it was like the one time, sometimes I had the, the fleece tied around my waist with just the wool coat. I just had a tank top on underneath. <laughs> I was sweating. By the time I got to the obelisk, I was sweating my hair, like the base of my hair. Was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was kind of, it, to me, it just amused me. And But it was, you know, it served me well because every time, like, when there was something that I got into my lower mind about that, would have been a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, there was that memory of them telling you to leave the black <laughs> fleece at home. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't buck the rest of the day. I did not buck them at all. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and then, you know, and a lot when I, sometimes when I communicate with Raphael, I just laugh. Like, I burst out into, like, laughter. And I just go through, like, I just get so giddy. And it'll take me, you know, a little bit, and I'll have to, like, kind of settle in and, you know, then I can get to work. Yeah. Um, but it's never happened. Um, it happens when I was doing that clearing for that person, but it's never happened, like, during a healing or in the presence of anybody else other than that one time. So well, as soon as I got up. about energies, um, to back up a little, Vanessa's wondering what is the difference between the energies underground versus above ground. It's not an energy thing. It's um, it's really just about receiving. It was a reception thing for me. It's it's just um, um, it's just a different frequency. I think it's no different than um, how your radio station goes out when you go into a tunnel. It's to, that's what it really kind of felt like to me, like the same thing. Okay. Well, thank you. So it's kind of like I had a, you know, 
you know, you have to play with the knob. He had a blackout. <laughs> huh? and yeah. A blackout. Yeah. Did that yeah, get for you, Vanessa, if you just let us know? Thanks for explaining that. She, I like to keep up with the hosts, the guests, and the listeners and keep them on the same place. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad you're paying attention because if I, if I do, I can't talk at the same time. <laughs> And we are at a place where we should take a break. Okay. So when we come back, do you remember where you were before I interrupted you? Um, uh, giggling. Giggling. Okay. We'll pick up with your giggling when we come back. If Colleen's ready. I'm here and we can break any time. Remember, we started late, so. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Well, let's go ahead and break, because I set it all up for break. Okay. So, Again, you know, I'm paying your favorite song, Guardian Angel. Oh, this is beautiful, Bunny. If you haven't heard this, it is beautiful. Alrighty, here we go. It's You're about listening. a, it's about a six minute, yeah, I'll put it on so that you can hear it. Yeah, and, and it fits so well with what I've been, we've been talking about lately on Dilly Dellying and Dolly World. Yeah, you've got an angel, angel. theme. Right? Yeah, I seem to. Not not that I picked it, but well, you have I, a very angelic energy. Yeah, and I didn't really pick really the show, that. but it picked me, and <laughs> I go along with whatever <laughs> comes this way. <laughs> so anyway, you were giggling because of the energies that you received from Raphael, right? Yeah. So when I first got on the bus, oh my God, the giggles came over me. <laughs> <And> I, <couldn't... laughs> I don't know. Did you ever see that? Um, did you ever see that, that? There was a video going around a while ago on Facebook with this guy was on the subway. And he just starts laughing, and then no. like everybody, it sends off like a contagious laugh, and like everybody on the thing is the car is is laughing. Yeah. So I was like, well, the worst. I'm like, if, if I do laugh out loud, because I'm really trying not to laugh out loud. Like if I do, maybe it'll be like that's that that video. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, no, it probably won't go that way. <laughs> so you tried to keep your giggles inside. Yeah, and, and you know it gets worse when you do that. Oh yeah. So I started just like imagining like, you know, these two angels because they're they're large in stature, you know, and it's like. You know, where, what are you guys like up, tucked up in the, in the luggage racks? Like, how does this work? And, and then it's like, I gotta stop. Like, my brain just started running. You know, like, where are you putting those wings? And I'm like, I gotta stop because I was just getting myself worse, you know, and having oh. to breathe. And, and you know, they're just like patient, you know, they're like patient, you know, letting, letting it pass, which uh-huh. it's kind of makes it worse. <laughs> So it, it was, you know, there was just a lot of joy. The whole day was just really filled with joy. I have to say, I don't remember having a whole day where I don't think I've ever felt that good in my life. You know, just oh. that feeling that day. It was just so, um, it, I don't know. It was just the perfect, it was the perfect day. And a, and a lot of that really, I like I understand now, you know, doing a lot of reflection on that because there's, a lot of, um, you know, I recognize it as being able to do the mission required a lot of preparation, you know, for me to be able to do it, you know, so there's been a lot of preparation for it. Um, and then coming out of it is a lot of understanding um, that is about, you know, for me to use as my learning moving forward mm-hmm. and, you know, things that were introduced and, you um, so, really, I mean, I had my moments, you know, on Thursday, but really being in that place for, you know, such almost all the day of not having, um, uh, worries, cares. Just not being in, in, not being a part of any of the program. You know, I mean, the programs, and that's really what my work has really been about and is about, is about clearing, you know, clearing ourselves to get, to reach the divine essence within ourselves and to bring that forth 
into our physical physicality in everything we do, you know, whether it's relationships or your relationship with yourself or others or with your, you know, your business, um, your finances. I mean, that's what the work is all about. And, and um, there's... Well, Vanessa is asking what sort of preparation, not looking for particulars, but generalities. Um, well, like I touched on a little bit before about, um, you know, months and months of there being this urgency of um, a lot of just clearing of personal things, of um, of energy that's, you know, and thought processes that are not of my true self. And, so uh, it was basically clearing yourself so that you could allow this other stuff, your mission, to come in without any roadblocks. Right, right, which is basically, um, you know, the, the work that I've always done. It's really no different than anything that I do um, mm-hmm. or have done. Um, but it was just on such a fine-tuned level. Yeah. Um and, uh, um, yeah, it, it was just on such a minute level where um, there were things, okay, the way that I, I work with clearing, whether it's with myself or with clients, is I'm looking at um, what kind of patterns are showing up, what kind of, um, um, you know, what's showing up in your life, right, and, and then working through that and, and tracing that back to, you know, it's a it's a pathway backwards and and clearing that back and then that leads to, that opens up you know a path pathway to your true essence and so there's all different things that make that up right there's perspectives there's beliefs um, there's traumas um, there's you know things of that nature so you kind of work through them all and those are kind of like all different threads we have woven into us over the years of living in this world, not just in this lifetime, but we bring them in from other lifetimes. So it's it's a lifelong process, you know, um, because and we're all connected. So you're never really going to truly be clear in this planet on this planet mm-hmm. because we're all connected. And you yeah. know, there's just at any time there's any kind of negativity going on on some level even on the most minute level, it's right. affecting you, you know. Right. So um, this was, they really had me doing a lot of work with things that were not showing up in my life. Um, or it almost seemed there were a lot of points where, um, uh, yeah, it, it's really kind of hard to explain. But most things, of the stuff is, Things like inner child stuff, Bunny? No, I mean, I did most of my inner child work. I, I really don't have a lot of, and haven't for over a year, really don't have any of that kind of stuff too much. Um, it's not to say that I don't have it at all. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, it, well, you know, like one of it, um, you know, and, and a big part of it too is integration. So uh, one part of it is, you know, uh, not everybody's of this belief and understanding, but our spirit and our soul are two different um, energies. And um, the voice of your spirit is what I refer to as the higher self. And so my work has always been from day one um, really working with my higher self. And, and um, that's been the foundation of my work is developing that relationship with my higher self and then um, everything I do, whether I'm talking to God or talking to Raphael or, um, you know, anything flowing energy is always done through my higher self. So my higher self relationship has been very um, clear and a lot of understanding of that for, um, you know, the better part of the last 10 years. And um, So when you talk to me, what are you talking with? Well, your middle self. <laughs> I guess it all depends on the state you're in. But oh, what I was, one of the things that was that came up was you know to build the the, the uh, relationship with your um, soul. With your that, what? I was lacking with my soul self. Oh, soul. Okay. So uh, that was lacking. 
Oh. So that was shown to me. There's a lack of that communication there and understanding of what my soul is really about. You know, I have this high, high understanding of my spirit self, my higher self. Um, and in comparison, my soul self was a big difference. So that was brought out. So there was a lot of work that I had to do there. And um, some of the things that I discovered through work, Working with my soul was a lot of things that I thought were negative about myself were actually aspects of my soul that were just coming through in a distorted way. Mm-hmm. And so I had to kind of clear the way that I perceived some of the things that a lot of it was what I thought was negative, wasn't actually negative. And to be able to see it in a positive way and see how, um, because my soul energy is very, um, that's where my masculine energy is. My higher self is very feminine. Mm -hmm. So my soul energy um, is a feminine energy, but she's a very masculine energy. Um, And that's what's tied to my Egyptian lineage is my soul energy. So there was a lot to be able to learn, but I had to kind of work through some of my own personal perspectives and beliefs of things, you know, and a lot of it is what we're taught in this world of what's negative, you know, and and what's truly positive. If that makes Which, it's like sense. the word death. I mean, that death isn't always a bad thing. The death of of a bad relationship and the birth of a new relationship that comes out of the death of the bad one. You know, that's a good thing going on. The death of somebody you love, well, that's kind of a bad thing because you're going to be missing them. But it's a good thing for the person, well, hopefully, who crossed over because they get to start a new beginning. It's all in how your perception is at that moment in time, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's, it's, it's really about, you know, too, like, well, what is negative and what's positive. And, right. You know, really in our society, when we think about negative and positive, we're really talking about good versus bad. Yeah. And that doesn't exist. Like, that's not a, um, that's not a, um, when you're in your authentic self, when you're coming through with the divine, um, it's, it's, more of the way I understand, the way that I experience it is it's either, of, it's either of light or it's of dark. You know, it's, 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 um, if, and if it's not a delight, then it's not accept, acceptable. And that's mm-hmm. at the point that I'm at now. You know, that if, if something that I'm engaged in, whether it's a thought or it's a perspective, um, if it's not of delight, it's not acceptable. I can't, I'm at a point where no matter how my new, I might kind of, my ego self might say, well, that's just a little thing. It's not a big deal. It's not really showing up in my life. You know, God is saying, no, it's a problem. You know, if you want to go further and continue on your journey, it, it, you, that's not acceptable anymore. So yeah. it's been a lot of things of that nature. So it's requiring me to kind of look at myself in a different way and, and look at my own inner work, you know, from a point of, well, I do this inner work. I, I base it on what's showing up as far as, what's working in my life and what isn't, mm. what's creating blocks and what isn't. But So now it's a different place of looking at blocks um, yeah. and understanding blocks that are on my spiritual journey as opposed to blocks in my physical life. And it's so nice that you have help, you higher can't do help. Without the help. <laughs> you can't do it without the help. Yeah. You know, and that's why, you know. Well, I guess I should have said that you recognize that you have the help. Yeah, because sometimes I, it we go through it and we think we're alone doing it. Yeah, yeah, it's it wouldn't have happened, you know. And that's part of the, you know, a, a lot of my understanding too. I think this year has come around, you know, that whole thing. Like, you know, we go through those phases. We're on the journey. Like, you know, why do we have to be veiled? Why can't we just know everything? You know. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> when you start learning some of this stuff, you really start to realize, like, oh. Okay, I know why I was veiled because a lot of this stuff for me, and you know, I'm a pretty strong person. A lot of this stuff has knocked me on my butt. It's it's been overwhelming because there is this definite place of you're you're actually in two existences. 
you're existing in two places at once. You're existing in um, the realm of the, of the divine, and you're existing in the matrix. You know, and that is hard to do. It's really hard when you see, you can see why things are happening, especially with relationships. You can see why people are behaving the way they're doing from um, that divine perspective. And you just, but then from the matrix perspective, the experience of it, you know, it's, Mm -hmm. it's very hard to put those together. It's kind of like roller skating on the ice rink. I don't know. I never tried that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's pretty difficult. Yeah. For me, it's more like being ready for the rubber. Being time. ready for what? Because it's so it's a process, the rubber room, you know. I oh. feel like I'm going nuts sometimes. You're breaking. You know, and I see, you. like, if I wasn't, oh, any better? Talk to me again. Talk to me, baby. Am I better? Am I back in Dolly, Dolly World? Yes, you're back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would see. I mean, there's really been points where it's like, I, at times I feel like, my gosh, I feel like I'm losing my mind. Yeah. Because it's um, it's not you, you, existing in both means that you have both perspectives yourself, you know, and and that's um, part of the, the progression. You know, I'm not at a point where I solely see things from the higher perspective. I don't even know if that is the point that I need to go to. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm at a point here now where it's like I just want to be able to um, be able to be. Uh, um, functional <laughs> in this place, you know, and, and get my footing a little bit seeing things this way. It's really hard to articulate. Um, I can understand that. Yeah. It's really, really challenging to That's articulate. Cool. But you know, we got off your mission. Off my mission. Yeah. So we were giggling and we went through the tunnel and, um, first, I so think- I get, huh? I think we didn't tell people what your mission was. No, I did at the beginning. Oh, did you? Okay. To clear the obelisk. Just yeah. so they know what's the, yeah. oh yeah, to clear the obelisk. Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're, we're past the giggling now. And where are we? Okay, so, um, I get, I, I have the wrong itinerary and I get off at the wrong side of the park, which oh, I'm sure right. was, yes. right. I'm sure <laughs> it was, was preordained in some way because this is where your, um, um, message from Dave came in. This is the part I, I withheld on JP show. I wanted yes, to share this part with you. So I get off the subway. I get to Central Park, and I'm like, I had that feeling like, aren't I supposed to be by Fifth Avenue? So I punch in the the address of the museum onto my walk. GPS thing, and I'm over three and a half miles away, oh, no. and I'm like crap. Because yeah. it's, it's like I don't know. It was like around three o'clock or whatever, and I'm not in the greatest shape. And I had already just kind of gone through like I when I originally got on the subway, I went in the I went downtown instead of uptown, and you know, I did like that whole <laughs> oh, <no>. thing. <laughs> so I um, I had a lot of mistakes in the subway, and I know it was because it's harder for me to stay clearer in the subway. So uh-huh. I had a lot of, I probably took maybe a dozen subway rides that day. Oh, no. And I only needed to take four total, <laughs> back and forth. And then my my credit card was messing up. For some reason, some of the ones wouldn't take my credit card. And so I had it, you know, it's $3 for every trip. And so, like, if you mess up, you go the wrong way. As long as you don't go through the turnstile, you can um, you can just hop another train. So um, you don't have to pay again. But I would not do that. I would keep going through the turnstile. So every time it would cost me another three dollars, and I'm like my singles are like wearing down, and my credit card's not. So that that was the whole. But I, I stayed in the light with it, you know. So. Um, 
the, I'm just going to finish this and then I'm going to yes, read the, the questions she's put in there. Oh, well, so, those questions don't have to do with your mission, so I'm kind of putting those off to the end. Oh, okay, good. All right. You're, I'll, I'll leave those to you. Yeah. So, um, I see reincarnation in there and my perspective. Yeah, yeah. These aren't with your mission and that's simple. the whole point okay. of this show is your mission. So I, I, um, I, 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 I'm at Central Park and now I'm like, God, right? so I gotta like walk really fast. And so I'm the worst <laughs> with directions and like reading maps and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I had this thing, but not realizing that like my phone can flip. Right? Your phone so can flip? The screen flips. You know, oh, like when oh. you have a smartphone and you flip your phone. The I don't know too. anything about smartphones. Because, like, sorry. if I had a map and there was, like, this little long one, like, the GPS thing draws out, I would have just, like, turned the map to face in the direction I knew that I was heading. But oh, okay. it didn't work that way, and I didn't think of till after I got home that night, you can turn that up option off, which would be helpful. <laughs> so I came up in my mind that I can just go straight, not actually follow that little green line, and I'll get there much quicker. Oh, but it's opposite. So, and it doesn't show you like right away because you're walking. Uh-huh. So, I was and my I had a watch because my battery was was really low. Uh-huh. So I, um, I I got way off the path, way off, right? <laughs> yes. So I'm like, okay, I, I have to put the green thing away because I I just need to trust my intuition because the. The green line is making it worse for me because anything that involved thinking just because it took me out of that higher place. Uh So I just went in and headed in the direction like I felt I needed to go. And the park was packed. There were so many people. But like in the first area that I was in was all just kind of like, you know, people walking around and stuff like that. Not like any kind of activities. So all of a sudden, I get to this row of it's like all the vendors, people selling stuff, and you know, there's um, more activity kind of stuff going on now. So I asked this vendor guy, because I'm pretty sure I need to make a left. So I asked this vendor guy, I'm like, "Can I get to the, to the museum if I go that way?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, just walk up there, make a right, make a left, and you can't miss it." So I'm like, "But I, I'm still really far." So I'm like, "Okay." So I take a few steps. And in that direction, and then, like, I just, what if this isn't right, <laughs> you know? Oh, no. And the moment I did that, um, somebody, this guy had been setting up, he starts playing Silent Night on his um, violin. And the moment I heard the first note, I heard you saying, I'm going to hear the angels sing it. <gasps> I, get up. I knew in that split instant that that was the message and it was telling me I was just go, go in this direction. So I'm pretty far. I'm not even halfway, right? So Mm -hmm. I'm probably about two miles from Mm -hmm. the museum for probably at least the next mile. It was literally following the music. It was just, um, there was just, uh, at one point there was a girl doing ballet and every, because it's Christmas time, it's all, angelic Christmas kind of music. Oh my gosh, I got goosebumps all over my body. My hairs are standing up. (laughs) So the whole, that whole strip, I was just like, I just had you and Dave with me. I was like, oh, I know, like our crowd's getting bigger here, guys. It was just beautiful. It was just the whole row. And when I needed to make the right, like to the left, there's Uh no people playing music. It's all to the right. It's all in the direction that I'm going. So then there's a point, like, all of that ends, and I'm like, okay. And I can't really see because, like, the roads are really windy in Central Park. I'm like, I think that's Fifth Avenue up there, but I'm not sure. And so I looked at my map, and then it said to go down to the left. And I just, something just felt wrong, But and now there's no more music, you know? It's like they, they were, like, my last guide for the last mile. So I see this. This one guy just felt like the guy to ask. And so I asked him, I'm like, can I, and I pointed down to the left, can I get down to the museum that way? And he's like, well, you could. 
And he goes, but I take Fifth Avenue. And I was like, okay. And I'm like, no, I'm going to. And then it, then they said in my head, ask him why. <laughs> so I said, why do you take Fifth Avenue? He goes, because it's so much quicker. And I was like, oh, okay. So I'm like, that's Fifth Avenue for sure. He's like, oh, yeah, it's right around that bend. So I get up to Fifth Avenue. And then to the right, there's like really nothing. You know, there's all people on the sidewalks, you know, walking and stuff. But to the <laughs> left, it's that continuation of the music people and the vendor. It's like that whole thing again. Oh and my gosh. So I get, uh, then I get to the museum and I'm not sure because I know it's behind the museum. So I don't know, do I go like across the front of the museum and then walk around that way or can I walk around? I didn't know. So I'm standing there and when I look down to my left, there's just all, now it's all little kids because there's the Steiner school is not too far from there. So after school, the kids are out of school. The teachers bring them into the park to get used to playing in front of people. Mm-hmm. So there's all these little kids, like five to ten year olds playing their, their tubas and their saxophones and their violins. And it was so cool. It was just really, really awesome. So I'm like, okay, I know I need to make a left here. So I make a left and then all the music stops. And then I'm like, okay. And then there's one of those, you are here signs. <laughs> oh like, my you know, gosh. I, I think it might be the only you are here sign in Central Park. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it said like, I knew like it was literally right around the corner. So Holy I cow. It her end and right there, there she was, you know, but I just thought that was so cool because, you know, you had said that, you know, I'm going to hear the angels singing. You know, and I had no, I, I have no recollection of it. And I'm sure I didn't know why I said it when I said it other than they told, when I'm told to say something, I say it. Yeah, I'm the same way too. Like a lot of times you don't, you don't know why or, you know, but, and it, but that, I mean, I could never have foreseen that. Wow. And it was funny because when you said that, I remember saying to like Raphael at that moment when I was listening to it, I'm like, something tells me you are not going to be singing to me. <laughs> <laughs> I got like kind of a little affirmative on that. <laughs> You're really good to me, but I don't see you singing to me. <laughs> that is so cool. I'm so glad you shared that with me, with us. <laughs> so I get up to the obelisk and I couldn't tell from the website if I could actually get up to the obelisk or if I had to stand outside that circle, but uh-huh. there was that little opening there. So I was exhausted. Because I just, like, it wasn't like I strolled, you know, three and a half miles. I hustled three and a half miles, plus, you know, riding the buses and the subways and up and down the stairs. Um, Yes. I'm I'm not the most fit person either. So Uh I was exhausted. So I'm like, all right, we're here. I'm like, I'm taking five minutes, guys, you know. Yes. So I just kind of like plopped like on the thing. And there was this guy, there was one person there. So the, the park's packed all day. There's people everywhere, even like all around like the obelisk area, um, like away from the obelisk. It's, you know, there's people everywhere. It, it, it's like um, alongside of it are two pretty high traffic paths for bikers and runners and stuff like that. And, you know, there's people walking. So there's people all around, but nobody's near the obelisk. There's like this one guy... And he, he split, like, right after I got there. He just left. And um, so, I, you know, I had to take the salt, you know, and consecrate the circle and just put the salt on the outside of the circle. Wait, and you put this salt circle, where is it? Around the obelisk. There's oh, big, you went all the way around the obelisk with the salt? Yeah, yeah, on the outer part, because around the obelisk, it's like this big area, it's huge. Uh-huh. Um, like you could fit like a, I guess you could fit like a small house in there. I'm not good with measurements, right? Yeah. So it's a big area, and you, um, it's round, and then the, the, it's the, you know, the outside part of it has like a, like bars around it, and, um, you know, then there's all like, plants and stuff around that part of it and then around the edge like on the inside part of the bars is there's all like picnic benches that go all the way around yeah so I, so you um, put the salt by the picnic things or you yeah put- i just walk the outer edge 
but inside, not outside the bar. Yeah. Not like in the in the flowers. And it was okay. in there. So I just I and it was funny because where they had me start, like, you know, again, like I wasn't thinking, you know, I was just doing. Uh-huh. And um so I started and about halfway around the circle and then it dawns on me where I left my coat and my bag and everything was not where I started the actual circle, like uh, where I didn't like get up and just start putting the salt down. Like I walked like 10 feet before I did. Uh So I had to, um, I was like, well, I can't backtrack. You can't backtrack when you create a circle and I can't walk around twice, you know? So, and even if I could, I'll still be in the same. They're just like, just, just keep going. You know? Yeah, that yeah. was one of those things where they like plucked it. It was like that lower mind thinking. They just plucked it right out, and like as I got to the coat, it was like, oh, duh, you just pick it up and bring it with you, you know. So <laughs> yes. What I didn't realize till afterwards, like why they had me sit there and start the circle there, was my back was to um, Fifth Avenue now, and oh. so like I'm facing the 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 obelisk and that they would ultimately have me flow the energy down the ley lines. So sitting there, put the ley lines flowing out left and right to me. Ah. It would have been really hard to flow. I don't know. I guess it could have been done, but it would have just been awkward flowing that from any other angle, if you can imagine, you know? So um, that worked out really cool, you know, but that was all them. So, um, they had me um, seal her in light and and then pull, you know, all the, um, you know, the, the non-natural energies out of her and, and seal that up in the light. And um, that's their job. They take care of that stuff. I don't take care, even in, like, a regular, like, person healing, I don't take care of that. They do that. And um, they took care of that. And um, I pulled the... Um, the um, universal energy down into the tip of the obelisk. And I wasn't near her. I was sitting on the bench, so there's probably a good 10 feet between me and the obelisk. And um, the second, you know, it hit the tip of the obelisk, like it hit my crown. And I just, as I pulled it down, it just went all the way down through my body also. And um, so it hit the ley line and... I just float it out left and right simultaneously. Mm-hmm. And um, it was just beautiful. It was so powerful. It was like, I don't, I don't remember bringing in energy that strongly before. Oh, you had a little help. Yeah. But I mean, I've done some pretty big rituals, you know, with large groups and we've had some pretty strong energies in them. You know, I'm not a stranger to that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but this was, I don't know, this, as far as like flowing through my body like that, I don't think I ever felt that strongly. And then, um, it didn't last long, you know, and, and, uh, we sealed it up. And, um, the moment I sealed it, it was like this flood of couples came. The whole place got packed. And, wow. Yeah. Which is what I would have thought it would have looked like, you know, considering all the, activity in the park Uh um and it's you know you can't walk by without seeing it so um but what was really interesting to me was it was all couples and this was very much about the divine union you know it was the 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 energy behind this work and you remember when i was talking about um that's been my kind of focus of study for my own personal this year and then the whole understanding of the twin towers and um what that was representing and, and how these artificial energies, um, you know, the, the people that are not working of the light are very much about one singular synthetic artificial energy, you know, and this is about getting back to authenticity, the, uh, the natural energies, which is duality. Um, it's the masculine and the feminine. And um, that's what came with all couples. There was like, I think it was almost a dozen of them. I was just sitting there like, Wow, how cool is this, you know? <laughs> yeah. You saw the end result. Yeah, yeah. All this preparation for it and the trip to, and you were able to see 
the culmination of everything you did. Yeah, yeah. It it, it just it was um it was really cool. And then they they um they stayed with me all the way home and it was kind of funny because when I got, I really messed up the subways going home. I, I think because mm-hmm. at that point I was just carrying so much energy uh-huh. that I was just like, and um, so, because I wasn't about to walk back. I had to figure out how do I get, I didn't know the subways over there and this and that because I'm on the, the, the east side. I need to get to the west side. So I, um, I get, um, I screwed up so many subways. And that was when it was really bad with me, like, paying for, like, one subway after another. Uh So I'm on this subway, and I walk down the stairs, and I'm at the thing, and there's, and now it's, like, full-blown rush hour, and it's packed. And I'm like, man, I really hope this is the right subway. And then all of a sudden, I heard the most awesome African music. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I was like, I just had to follow the music, you know? So I walked down and, you know, it's like New Yorkers get a bad rap, but there's no, there's nothing really friendly going on down here, right? Waiting for the subway. <laughs> it's a lot of, you know, stuffy people that, you know, just been stuffed in an office building all day and they know they're about to get stuffed like sardines into a subway. Like people are not really in a great mood. Mm. And, I just follow this music and there's this um, man and a woman, again, the couple thing, um, this man and this woman and they're in really cool African kind of garb mm-hmm. and they're just playing, they've got bells and drums and their music was amazing. And More I, angels so, playing music. I, I totally felt that, like, I felt like, and because it was a different style, I uh-huh. felt like it was letting me know that this is your last subway you're going to be on today. Uh-huh. You know, like, you're good. This is it, you know? Uh-huh. And it was. It ended up being the last one. But I got so into it. I started, like, you couldn't, I couldn't help but to, like, move and, like, kind of move my hips. And I started dancing a little. And this group of girls, they had to be, like, in their late teens, early 20s, they're walking by. And they just stop, and we're all dancing. And then I, like, I look around. I tried to video, but right then was when my phone died, of course. Oh. And then <laughs> I look around, and I mean, there had to be like a couple dozen of people taking pictures and videoing. Like all of a sudden, the whole energy in the place had just shifted, and like people were engaging with each other. Like you don't see this on the subway at rush hour. You know? That is so cool. Yeah, and and we got on the subway, and, and we're all, you know, literally like we're you don't have one part of you that's not pressed up against somebody else, <laughs> and um, yeah, and I mean like pressed up. <laughs> <It's not> like, <laughs> you know, you're kind of like lightly rubbing shoulders, <laughs> like yes. you're packed there, <laughs> and um, yeah, and, and then I I got to um, I, I got I got back to Port Authority and I got on my bus and um, Mikael um, I, I kind of started feeling him like fade away like about halfway home and then um, Raphael I felt him stay with me but it wasn't that intensity you know it was about halfway home and um, it was like once we got out of all the traffic and all that stuff when um, I knew you were safe yeah, yeah, and then it was just kind of like with Raphael was like, okay, I know you're still here, but you know, yeah, and you're giving me back the you know the reins again, you know. Uh-huh. But um, so when I got home, I just um, I just like was trying to absorb it all, and I was just relaxing and just kind of chilling out, and I did that for like a couple hours, and and then all of a sudden, like it all started to like really sink in of what the day was. And I just got this overwhelming feeling of like joy and just realizing like how much joy I was in all day and how beautiful, you know, that you could like, Oh yeah, it really is possible to like schlep, you know, the New Jersey transit system and the, you know, the New York subway during rush hour and be in a place of joy, you know, and it really showed me how joy really is a choice. It's about it. It truly is. It's yes. a choice we make. Yes. And 
no matter what's going on, no matter how things could seem to go wrong, um, stay in that place of joy. It's still your choice. And whether you enjoy or not enjoy, um, you're there. So, you know, you, wherever you go, you there you are. So be in a place of joy. Be in that higher mind as, as much as you can. And um, I just got, like, so happy and... Um, I was just, I, I just said out loud to God, I said, you know what, God? I said, if I can be in this state every day for the rest of my life, that would be the coolest thing. Cause I'm like, I feel like I, I was like needing of nothing, you know? Uh huh. And the moment, like I said that, my friend that I had asked to say the prayer for me, who I forgot all about, I never let him know like I was done or anything like that. Um, he had messaged me and said, you know, how did it all go? It's, it's like 11 o'clock at night now. And I was like, oh, it was great, you know, and this and that. And he said, well, you never told me exactly what to say. He said, so I just wished for you. Um, I just prayed for you to have um, happiness. You experience happiness forever or something like that. And I was like, that's pretty much how I was feeling right now. <laughs> I'm like, I think it worked. So that was cool. But, um, yeah, it was just, it was, I don't know, it, and it's really changed. You know, I've had a huge shift in my own self and my own energy, my own vibration has definitely shifted upward and um, opened up more. So the the positive experience that you had with that is staying with you in, yeah. in different ways. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, the challenges are all there, you know. Um, and the contrasts are there, but um, but you look at def- it differently now. Yeah, it's definitely it's a progression forward. You know, it's it's yeah. not much forward, and it's um, it's yeah. I, I think the biggest thing that I've taken away is um, because a lot of this is about this point. It's about the kind of the emotions that are kind of at the bottom of your barrel, even though they're really small getting pulled up to the surface so that you can release them. So yeah. there's a lot of emotional, especially me, I'm very, you know, I'm an empath. I'm a very emotionally sensitive person. So, uh, you know, if emotions are tough for me, you know, at times, so it can be really challenging. But it's at that same time, it's there's no doubt in my mind that it's like, oh, you know, as much as this feels so in it, you know, there's that membrane of uh, I have I can shift out of this any time because the discomfort is just because I'm resisting. You know, that's uh-huh. the only reason why we experience the discomfort. You know, in life, regardless of what's happening, regardless of what we're feeling, it's because we're resisting. Right, right. You know? We get in our own way a lot. I would say um, that's pretty much all that we really do. <laughs> I'm serious. I, I don't think that, you know, and I, I felt that way early on in my journey and, um, you know, you know, back decades ago journey. But I even now I would say that's the biggest. It's so much easier for me to see how um, we truly really are what gets in our own way. It is that choice that we make to resist, but we do it on such subconscious levels because it's all about programs that cause us to resist. Yeah. So it's, you know, we say it's a choice, but it's a choice we're making on a subconscious level so we're not aware that we're making the choice. And it feels very real. But Mm -hmm. if you, um, and I would say, and it's made me a lot, I have a lot more patience with myself. And I have more acceptance of myself, more love of myself, and kind of respect for my own processes. And I would say of other people, too. You know, like, I'm a lot more patient with other people and, um, you know, more more compassionate and understanding. Like, you know, just because something's obvious and clear to me, they're in it. And I feel like I can hold the space for other people better, Uh which is, you know, it's a plus, so. Yeah. So all in all, it was a good experience, right? It was. Yeah, I would. I I, I do a lot of. Um, I do a lot of energy work. Um, you know, in the astral kind of sense. So, 
it's um, I do do a lot of you know trips on the astral with the angels of going to different places and traveling that way and bringing light and um, helping you know beings cross over you know I have a lot of those kind of experiences um, but I've never you know had something knowingly in the physical you know that was this kind of specific mission uh-huh. and um, it's like nothing else it's just so it was so cool yeah <laughs> just no words for it I, I understand that yeah it's really hard to I remember like, was like when I messaged you when I got home you know and you were like do you feel different and I was still in that place like I really hadn't even begun to absorb it yet you know like I think uh-huh. you were like one of the first things I did when I got home was message you and JP, I think. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> I was so like, I just, like, I got to tell somebody. You know? <laughs> like, it happened. I'm so glad yeah. I was on then. <laughs> yeah, me too. And then, it, but it, it's, um, I think, you know, the big thing for me, it's it's what's, you know, like you were saying with the with the couples, like that it was this affirmation. I think for me in a lot of ways it was an affirmation of other things too because what always I always knew for a long time that there was work you know that a big part of my purpose was to specifically work with these you know energies of you know the kind of the darker people on the planet what they do and to um to help clear that. And so I, um, it was, it was a big, for me kind of, um, I kind of feel like I came full circle with it. Not that the journey's over. Uh, I think it's really just the tip of, you know, but I think when we go a circle, when you come around a full circle, you just hop onto a new circle. It's all continuous cycles. Um, but it just really felt like it just confirmed for me, like, things that I just always innately knew that I was here to do, you know, for my life and throughout my life. And um, really affirmed to me, not that I need, felt like I needed it, but affirmed to me just the the power of when we go within and when we work, you know, at clearing that stuff out. You know, a little off topic, I have a client um, that's actually a – self-proclaimed atheist and I've worked with him for over a year now and we even though it's not a spiritual type session to our coaching sessions um in you know that there's just any kind of focus because he just doesn't acknowledge any of that stuff he doesn't acknowledge God you know I can't talk to him in terminology of energy because he doesn't compute that way so it's a very different type of language I have to use with him. and um, But it's still taking him through that process of always going within for your answers. Mm-hmm. And it was funny because like two weeks ago, he actually had a spiritual experience where he met, he met his higher self. Wow. And yeah, and it was really um, when you have that experience, it really shakes you up. Because it, and for somebody like him too, you know, that doesn't believe in that kind of stuff, uh-huh. um, it really shook him up, you know. Yeah. And it really, I've just, he's the only person I know that's had that experience without, you know, having some kind of intention for that on that path uh-huh. um, or some kind of being on a spiritual path, you know. Yeah. And it, you know, just shows to me like um, that is, that is what, that's how we get to our own divinity. You know, it's, it's clearing and, and always going within yourself to, for your answers and looking to yourself as, you know, taking accountability for what's going on in your life and how you process things and how you see things and, you know, being out of the blame game, being out of the victim game and all that stuff. And it does, it, it leads you to your divinity and it leads you to your purpose and it leads you to what you're here to do and it leads you to a place of joy that doesn't exist in this world Mm -hmm. you know it only exists within you through through the divine yes 
It reminds me of the song. I have the joy, 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 joy deep in my heart. And then it, it has the verse, I have the peace that path us understanding deep in my heart. That song I used to sing as a child. But now as an adult, and since I've entered the, what I call Dolly world, I understand those words more than just understand them. I, I am, I feel those words. I am those words. And, and I find myself walking around the house singing that a lot. <laughs> it's so true. I mean, it really is. It's, it's within you, you know, and there's times where, you know, especially when you're clearing, you can get like, for me, I'm so sensitive and so in tune to my own energy. Sometimes when I clear something, you know, there's that moment of gap where there's an actual void and within my own energy system. And even though I've just cleared out something that didn't serve me, there's that moment where there's that void there and that can feel like that empty, lonely place. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and it's like I know now it's just innate, you know, I don't have to think. Before I had to kind of think about it a little mm-hmm. bit and kind of get to that point. But now since that mission, it's it's instinctual now for me. It's like, okay, well, I can just fill this with divinity, you know, the, the divinity within me. I can just let that fill that space and expand, okay. you know, and into that. And um, that... That is such a beautiful place to be, you know, to feel that because that is, that's where the joy is. And you're just, you know, every time you clear that out, you make room for your divine essence to expand, which is, it's infinite. Uh And it doesn't have boundaries and limitations, just physical does, you know, and it can expand into whatever you want and you keep filling yourself with it and filling yourself with it and, you know, you, you suddenly have your cup's overflowing and you can spill it out into other things and that's when we can do healing and and work for others. Yeah. And I think after this discussion, I think we've touched on what Anand 6697 was asking or commenting. I often forget to ask for angelic and higher inner being guides to get healing for body and wallet. I think we've addressed that issue pretty much. Well, what I would just say to that is, um, you know, you always want, I mean, this is what I teach, um, you always want to connect to your higher self first. Um, And the reason for that is because there is a lot of trickery um, in the astral planes. Um, There's um, a lot of manipulation and um, if you're connecting to your higher self first, you don't have to worry about any of that. It's like your instant kind of protection thing, you know. And your higher self, um, your higher self will call in what you need to call in. Um, if, if you know, so you, it, it does that work for you because your higher self is is perfection. It's it's perfect. It's you know, it's of source. It's not, um, it's, it would never make a, a wrong mistake. It would know exactly who to call in for you. I mean, when I was doing my inner child work, um, I, I actually had my, the way I did it was I would connect to my higher self first, and I would have my higher self call in the inner child aspect that was most needed for me at that time. So I always put that responsibility of that decision-making onto my higher self. So you connect to your higher self first, and, um, you know, you can. I mean, not that I don't ever ask for a specific being, um, you know, but especially in the beginning when I didn't have, like, but I didn't have those relationships built or I didn't understand some of them yet, like with Raphael and some of the master, the two masters of light that I work with. You, um, you, you know, you have your higher self call those in for you. Um, you know, like, one of my um, my masters of light that I work with is Merlin, and I had somebody give me the advice on something that said, um, "Well, if you're working on such and such in life, ask your higher self to bring in a master of light for you to work with." 
And so I did that, and I let her, you know, I didn't tell her who I wanted to work with, and she brought in Merlin. And there was a time when I did a, um, I had a reading done by my spiritual teacher, and she didn't know, you know, this I had never told her. And she had said, you know, the male master of light that I work with is Merlin. So it's just another affirmation that your higher self is going to call in who you you need to work with. So if there is a... you know, any beings that you have established relationships with from hundreds of thousands of years that your essence has been in existence, you know, those are the ones that are going to call call in. And even though you're not consciously aware of the relationship, um, it's already established and um, it'll work better. So, um, you know, that's why people say, well, which goddess should I work with? with which you know angel should i work with like just let your higher self choose because your higher self is going to choose the one that is right for you for whatever the reason whether it's a long established relationship or because of where you are currently mm-hmm. some of that kind of shed a little extra aspect yeah. to that. and she also mentioned money i never get into money with the guides because they aren't concerned with money they are concerned with our happiness, and we are here to have joy. Right. And they do understand that money is what enables, is the system that's used for us to get the things that we need and we want. And it's not a taboo thing. It's, and that's one of the, one of the programs, you know, that we have, unfortunately. And I do. I work with my um, my my guides with finance with ab- it's with abundance, you know, because abundance is a um, it's a it's a flow, you know, it's just a flow, and it's um, it's an energy that we can work with to you know establish ourselves. And you know, I had a lot of, and I still have issues with that that I have to work through, um, and that's one of the things that. There, you know, and actually, it was two days after I did the the trip to New York City. They, you know, my higher self said, you know, pay attention to some of the things about abundance coming over the next forty eight hours because that's going to be more of our focus now on what you're doing. Because, um, you know, when you think about it, um, you know, if if there's, I, I want to go all over the world if, if that's what my guides want me to do to um, to do healing work. Uh-huh. You know, if if I would have loved to be able to be like, I, I don't know if this is what I mean. I would make the decision on my own, but if that's what they wanted me to do, to to, to go to all four needles, like how cool would have that have been to be able yeah. to go to all four? I can't do that because of financial reasons. So right. we have to realize too that. Finances, abundance is not a dirty word. You know, that's part of our own joy and that's something a lot of light workers really need to work through because the more that we can be in abundance, we are raising our own vibration and we are being more in our own power and the more work we can do, you know, because that's what it's all about. But they want us to be happy. They don't want us suffering and, you know. Well, I guess I look, I, I approach it in a different way, but the same end result. If they want me to do a certain thing and I am in a position financially where I know that I can't do it, then I say, well, if you want this to happen in my life, you're going to have to provide a way for it to happen. And nine times out of ten, it happens. Yeah, yeah, totally. Because if that's, um, and if that's what you're experiencing in your life, then I would say you don't have a block with abundance. And then I would say that the reason why you're probably not working with your guides with abundance is probably because you don't need to. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I would say. Yeah, I think, it, yeah, you hit the nail on the head there. Yeah. I never stopped to think about it that way. Yeah. I just figure if they want something to happen, then it's going to happen. And I'm yeah, but some of us have issues. Like I've had a lot of issues with that, you know, with the programming, you know, just, just being brought I mean, I was brought up money is, is the root of all evil. I mean, I was brought up that way, you know, so I had to, you know, I have to. I'm still working through that stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, 
yeah, you got to get out of that. But if if you have that going on, you definitely want your guides to work with you because, you know, you're just kind of like beating your head against the wall trying to do it for yourself. Right. And here's another question. Um, Anon 6697, is she the same who went to CERN a few months ago to revoke cancel energies. I told him, no, I didn't think that was you. No, no, I've never done any work with CERN. Yeah. I, I think Simon was talking about that. or I know I, Simon did at one show. I think Simon has at multiple shows, actually. Mm-hmm. Well, I think we answered all the questions we need to answer. Craig asked one, but... He's left, so we don't need to address it because it really had nothing to do with our topic. Okay. Yeah, and my my insight on that is very unconventional. <laughs> so I don't want to open that can of worms. <laughs> okay, joke. We will avoid that one. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me on, Dolly. Well, and hey. thank you so much for the um um the you know the messages you had passed on from Dave, you know, before and. It really meant a lot to me you know, that day with the little music I, guides. I had completely forgotten about it, but it's so wonderful to hear you had that experience. And and it helps to confirm with me, you know, the things you say may sound silly to you, but they mean something to the person you're telling it to. Yeah. yeah. So I At the right time when they need to. Right. It yeah. it won't happen right away all the time, but it will eventually. And if the people are paying attention, then they can say, oh, hey, I remember that way back when. <laughs> I've, I've had that. People come back with that experience, but that was so cool. I'm so glad you had that experience and that you shared it with us. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And Colleen, I think we can wrap it up. Are you done? I think so. All righty, we will put on the outro now. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, people, for coming. Thanks, Colleen, for producing. And thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you. Love you guys. Love you, too. Love you too. Bye. Bye-bye.